How's it going everyone? My name is Cyric, and today I'm going to show you a complete tutorial on how to download, set up, and run the Raptorium CPU miner from Windows 10. Just as a side note before I begin, you can run the software for other versions of Windows as well as Linux slash Ubuntu, but again this tutorial will be centered around setting up the miner with Windows 10 specifically. There might be a couple differences if you are using a different edition of Windows, but regardless, setup should be mostly the same. So to kick things off first, we're going to be heading over to raptorium.com. Now to get the best miner, I highly recommend going ahead and joining the official Discord server for this coin. You can use the CPU miner that's linked right here uh, under downloads, but just know this is no longer the best performing or most efficient miner out there for this coin. The developers are constantly updating this miner, so your best bet is to once again go ahead and join that Discord. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the most up-to-date compiled miner as of the posting of this video, which I already have open right here. Uh, as you can see, it was only updated about two days ago. We're on version 1.1.0b. Thanks to Delgon and Aus Miners over on the Discord server for providing this to us. Uh, we have seen some, uh, some pretty big performance jumps in the last month or so from these guys. So props to them. Shout out to them. As you can see, we are seeing some pretty big performance increases with large pages in MSR. Uh, I will be going over large pages in this tutorial because it seems like a lot of people on the Discord server are a little bit confused about that. I will not be going over NS MSR as currently it only supports Linux. So all you're going to do is head down to the bottom here and click CPU Miner OPTGR 1.1.0B Windows.7Z. And when you click this, uh, as you can see on Chrome, it does tend to uh, tend to block and mark it as a dangerous file. Um, the source code is available for this. There is no virus in this. I've been running this miner for a couple days now, and I have had no issues whatsoever. So we're just going to go ahead and click keep. And I will see you back over on the desktop in just a moment. So once you have the miner downloaded, go ahead and put the file in whatever location is best for you and extract it. Open up the folder you extracted, and even if you've used previous versions of the Raptorium CPU miner before, you may see some unfamiliar folders and items in here. Don't panic, we'll be going over exactly what each one of these files means in just a sec. For those of you who are brand new to the idea of mining this coin, you're probably wondering why this miner has so many files in it, especially if you've used other miners before, such as Monero or Ethereum. And this is because the algorithm Raptorium uses, uh, also known as Ghost Rider, can utilize different instruction sets based on the type of CPU you're using. I highly recommend you know which CPU you have specifically so you can run the most optimal instruction set and get the highest hash rate out of this miner. In this example, I'm going to be using the AVX2 instruction set, as my CPU isn't new enough to utilize any other inst instruction sets. Again, this is completely dependent on which CPU you have, so if you were to select the wrong instruction set, your miner would most likely report either an incredibly low hash rate or just won't work at all. The easiest way to find out which CPU you have is to right-click the taskbar and click on Task Manager, and then jump over to the, to the Performance tab. And what you'll see here on the side is the brand and then the model of CPU you, that you have. Now that's great and all, now that we know what CPU you have, that doesn't really tell you which instruction set that you need to be using. So go ahead and click the readme file down here and it will show you exactly which instruction set to run based on which generation of CPU that you're using. Uh, currently anything older than AMD Ryzen does not work, however older Intel chips are currently supported. And if you're still not sure of which instruction set to run, feel free to ask in the mining section on the official Discord and most likely someone will be able to help you and give you the best answer. So once again for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the AVX2 program. However, as far as setting up this configuration file goes, it's exactly the same regardless of which instruction set you'll be utilizing. So first, to configure your batch file, we're going to right click and then click edit. And here you're going to see a few arguments already set by default. Those defaults are going to be the wallet address, the pool address, and the ghostwriter algorithm selection. So this is where you will be entering, again, your wallet information, the pool information, and the number of CPU threads that you want the miner to use. By editing this, the miner will know where to send the coins to. If you don't have a wallet yet, head back to the official Raptorium website and download the wallet and create a new address. I can make another video on this another time if you guys need one, uh, but I'll simply do that based off of request. 
if you don't have a pool to mine to, uh, Supernova is a great pool. I have used Supernova uh, way, way back in the day, back when they were much, much smaller. I do like Supernova. However, I highly recommend r-pool.net. They have a higher payout structure, which in turn translates to less transaction fees over time and is also one of the only pools out there completely dedicated to the Ghostwriter algorithm. Shout out to Stormy for the pool. He's pretty active in the official Discord server. And I've seen him in the past ask for user input on his pool, so I highly recommend checking it out. Personally, I'm a big fan of pools dedicated to a single algorithm. A link to the pool will be in the description. Now, looking at the new arguments in the config file, there are a few that I would like to go into a bit further detail in the default config to better optimize your miner to your liking. The first one is dash Y. This disables MSR when the miner is ran, and since it's currently disabled for Windows, all this does is hide that ugly error message. It should already be in your config by default. The second one is going to be dash T. By using this argument, you can specify how many CPU threads you would like to use for the miner. Please do not get core count and thread count mixed up, as oftentimes the amount of threads you currently have available is double the amount of cores, depending if you have what's called hyper-threading in your CPU. Most modern mid to high-end CPUs and sometimes even low-end CPUs have hyper-threading, but console AMD or Intel's website uh, if you're unsure about your CPU and how many threads you actually have. For this tutorial and for my computer, I have 12 CPU threads available to use, but personally, I don't recommend using every single thread you have since you typically want to leave one or two threads available for your operating system to use. This, in my opinion, increases overall stability for your system since the miner doesn't need to fight for those resources against other programs and services on your computer, especially if you plan to run a GPU miner alongside this. And the last one is a totally new feature which I absolutely love and is in my opinion a great addition to the latest minor release and it's called dash dash benchmark. It does exactly what it sounds like it does and from my experience of using it over the last couple of days it's great to find out your average hash rate. Very similar to the random X algorithm for Monero, Ghostwriter uses different sets of algorithms that constantly change to counter against ASIC miners and graphics cards, so your hash rate is going to be fluctuating quite a lot. Only use dash dash benchmark for benchmarking, obviously. You don't want to include this when you're ready to start getting some coins. So again, for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and then we're going to do file and then save and then go ahead and exit out of this. So with my current config, I have 10 CPU threads dedicated to the miner, and if we go ahead and double click run, as you can see, we have connected to the supernova pool, and now the miner is going to start sending shares. Every time that you see accepted in green text pop up, and you see a number next to it, that is a share accepted and then the number of shares that you have submitted since you started the miner. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and get out of this since there is just a couple more things that I wanna talk about. All right, so you're probably wondering what the two folders at the top are for. And this is for users who have lots of cash available to their CPU. If you don't know what this means, honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about it, especially if you're a really casual CPU miner. If you open one of the folders, you're going to see a whole other set of programs just like this. And to my understanding, these programs better optimize and dedicate cache to each thread being used by the miner, thus giving higher optimized hash rate. After talking with Delgon about how these can best be utilized, the main folder is the light configuration, so that's what all of this is, which can be used by anyone with any CPU that supports Ghostwriter. The medium folder, which is this one, should be used with CPUs that can dedicate at least two mebby bytes of cache per thread. And finally, the heavy folder should be used by CPUs that can dedicate roughly four mebby bytes of cache per thread. Using the medium or heavy programs with a CPU that doesn't have a large amount of cache available will most likely report a lower hash rate than if it were using the light main folder programs. And last but not least, we have one final optimization that we can take advantage of with this release, and it's known in the server and enterprise world as large pages, or in this context for the Raptorium CPU miner, it's known as huge pages. 
enabling large pages is essentially allowing an application, or in this case, our Raptorium CPU miner, to use a larger amount of RAM in our system as a buffer, per se, which increases efficiency and in turn gives a performance boost to mining. There have been guides on this in the past of using XM Rig RandomX Miner for Monero, and it's essentially the same process, so if you're familiar with that, then you know exactly what I'm talking about here. And if I may add a quick disclaimer, if you're unsure about what you're doing in this next step, or your system doesn't already have a decent amount of RAM, I highly recommend just skipping this part, honestly. Any wrong configuration of another object in this list other than the one I'm about to show you could cause serious operating system problems and stability issues. Also, please note this option may not be available to users who are using Windows 10 Home Edition. So to enable large pages, all you have to do is hit Windows S and then type gpedit.msc and then press enter. This is the group policy editor. And in this window, all you need to do on the side here, on the left side, you're going to click window settings and then security settings and then local policies. And then you're going to click user rights assignment. And when you click on this folder, you'll see the whole right side here populate with a, for a list of options and policies. And if we scroll down here just a little bit, the one that we're interested in is lock pages in memory. If you saw me use the CPU miner earlier, you'll see that I actually already have huge pages enabled. And again, that's because I've already done this. But all you need to do is once you double click on it, click add user or group. And then all you need to do is type your user account name for your computer. This is not your desktop name. This is your account name. Don't get the two confused. And then simply type in your account name and then click OK. It may default to this kind of layout. That shouldn't be a problem, but because this is already in here and because I have already done this operation, I'm, just, I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. And now the final step is to exit out of this and restart your computer. Changes will not take effect until you restart your computer or at the very least log off the account and then lock on. And this allows those policies to take effect. And the next time you start up the miner, we'll go ahead and start up the miner. You should see huge pages set up successfully. And quite honestly, that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and happy mining Reptorium. Thanks for watching.